Hello, this is Lisa Crosby, and in this video, I am going to take you through a rapid set of highlights of the Wave 2 2020 release for PAL Platform and Dynamics 365. This is my top 10 in 10 minutes. All right, my number one feature, I am the most excited about this. This one actually sits inside the Power Platform new release notes, and it is providing natural language search capability in model-driven apps. Now, don't forget, Dynamics 365 is also a model-driven app, so this one is going to cross over both of those things. And these are some examples I've copied from the release notes of things that you will be able to do in terms of search. Now, in my experience, many, many users have trouble with constructing queries using Advanced Find, trying to find the information they need. It's just people just want to be able to type in what they're looking for and bring it back. So this is going to integrate business Q&A with relevant search, which means users will be able to do things like typing in, you know, who is the owner of Alpine Ski House, but more complex things as well. The contact's job title is manager or the or CIO and they live in this geographical region or whatever. So from a user point of view, from a user experience point of view, this is big. This is going to make dynamics, model-driven apps much, much easier for users to access the information they need. So really genuinely excited about what this is going to be able to do for those users. Next up, we have the Sales Accelerator. So this is part of Dynamics 365 Sales. It was actually announced a couple of months ago, but it's getting its first formal release in this release wave and a bunch of other new features being announced as well. So the Sales Accelerator is part of the Dynamics 365 Sales Insights product. It is a, a tool that is designed for um, inside sales, people who are doing high velocity selling, having to contact lots of people. It's using AI to give you a cue down the left hand side of next best customer and then take the users through a series of templated sequenced events that they click through. And what we're seeing in this release wave being added to that is some extra things like automatically sending out template based emails and also like an intelligent uh, distribution of leads. So if you're a sales manager and you're getting hundreds of leads and you have to send them out, there's there's AI behind the scenes now able to help you with that. So big, big kind of feature here that's been added to Dynamics 365 sales for that kind of high velocity inside sales scenario. Now, I know we're not particularly mobile at the moment, but I think this is still really, really useful. This is a new mobile experience for Dynamics 365 sales that is designed specifically for sellers. Now, we all know salespeople don't like doing data entry, but sales managers and managers need that data to add value to the business. So having a mobile app, the current Dynamics 365 mobile app is really just a reformat of the current user interface in mobile format. This is a properly designed app designed to make it easy for sellers to get to what they need. You can see there, you know, recent contacts, recent records. It's going to make it much easier to find things, add notes after call. So really kind of addressing that issue of making it easy for salespeople to get the data in that provides value, value back into the organization. So I don't even think it matters if you're mobile or out in the field. I think the experience of being able to enter using an app that is designed for your job role is, is super, super amazing. On a personal level, I'm very, very pleased to see this one. Integration between Dynamics 365 Marketing and Microsoft Teams as a platform for webinars and meetings and things. So I do a lot of running, um, running webinars and running public sessions and things. We do all that through Teams. So Teams has a live meetings functionality, which, which is a, a webinar platform. Um, up until now with Dynamics 365 Marketing, you know, awesome event management capability to, to take registrations and and, and track who attended, but the only webinar platform um, integration option there was something called On24, which isn't, isn't very commonly used. So now, all on the one platform, you don't need to go pay for a third party webinar provider. You can use Teams Live Events for your webinars, Dynamics 365 Marketing for your event registration and management, and those two things are going to work together. So can't wait to get my hands on that one. 
This one is a lot of people's uh, number one in the community. This is a big deal actually on the Power App side of things, the ability to create custom pages for model driven apps. So at the moment, model driven apps, again, you know, dynamics and so on, you are constrained by the form layouts, the view layouts and so on. This actually brings the world of Canvas apps and model driven apps together. You'll be able to go in and create a new page, put whatever you want on it. So you could create things like landing pages or pages for your records that might bring in different components and things. So this really opens wide up the way that we can design the look and feel of model driven apps and bring those kind of low code canvas skills into being able to create custom pages for model driven apps. So that one um, is not, not coming till the end of 2020, but that's going to be an absolute game changer um, and is, is kind of, you know, one of the most important features that's coming through with this release. AI Builder, one of my favorite parts of the platform. I've actually got two AI Builder features here for number six and seven. The first one is uh, an improvement to the form processing model. So AI Builder allows you to bring artificial intelligence into your apps and into your automations through flows without having to write code. It's like a wizard style interface. And the forms processing model is able to read something you'll see in the picture there, like an invoice, pick out the fields, grab that data, and then do whatever you want with it. Put it in your data database or whatever. So this can save you a whole lot of manual data entry. And one of the biggest sticking points that I've seen with this is that it was only working on one format. So if you have invoices coming in from lots of different customers, you would have to have built a different processing model for each of those, which just really made it not particularly viable in those scenarios. So what we're seeing in this release is that the form processing model will support multiple form layouts, which means it opens up this functionality to people who want to use it for things that have different layouts coming in from different customers and things. So I think this is going to make this a whole lot more widely used. Also on the AI Builder side, we are getting receipt scanning. Um, so this is a new model that will allow you to basically create your own expense app. Kind of easy to see the use case for that. Scan a receipt, grab the, you know, the total, the details, whatever, push that through. So I think we're going to see a lot of DIY expense apps coming through once this feature is out and about. There's heaps in the new release about RPA, robotic process automation, um, more than I can cover here. I've pulled this feature out. RPA is about being able to connect to systems that you can't connect to with an API. Um, so what this is doing, it's named in particular Excel and SAP, which are, which are conversations I've had with people a lot about how to kind of connect to those and automate across those. So we're seeing, um, you know, not much detail yet, but some kind of built in support that's going to allow us to use RPA to go deeper into automation across those applications. So really looking forward to learning more about what we will be able to do there. At number nine here, I think everyone's going to want to have a go at this. Um, within Power BI, we're going to see a new Power Automate visual. So Power BI, awesome tool for visualizations of, um, you know, your data, but you want to take action at the moment, you can bring a canvas app into Power BI. Now you will also be able to bring Power Automate. So you can, from within the context of your dashboard, trigger something to go out and run a workflow. So, you know, that's going to be an absolute game changer for, for Power BI in terms of it being a tool both for insight, but also now within the context of I've sliced and diced and looked at my data and now I can press a button and I can trigger an automation that's picking up the context of that data. So that's going to make make um, Power BI even more valuable. And last but certainly not least, uh, Power Virtual Agents. One of, there's a lot of features, new features around Power Virtual Agents. I've picked this one out because it's something that I've heard a lot of people asking for, uh, which is the ability to grab topic suggestions for your chatbot from your existing files. So at the moment, you can grab an existing FAQ or something from a, a website um, and bring it into Power Virtual Agents and it will automatically create those topics for you. But what we're seeing with this new release is the ability to do that from files as well. So Excel, uh, CSV files, um, Word documents, PDFs, and so on, you'll be able to grab those in and it will also be able to suggest multi-turn conversations. So that's going to make it very easy to get up and running with Power Virtual Agents. And there you have it, my top 10 in 10 minutes, wave two, 2020. Hope that's been useful. Please go read the documents if you want to find out more. Thanks for watching.